Welcome to Astronomy Daily, your go-to podcast for all the latest in space and astronomy news. I'm your host, Anna. In today's episode, we have some fascinating stories lined up for you. We'll start with the latest updates from NASA and Boeing as they meticulously analyze data from the crew flight test of the Starliner spacecraft. Then we'll delve into an exciting development by Space Perspective as they unveil the world's first marine spaceport, MS Voyager, promising to revolutionize spaceflight experiences. And finally, we'll explore a groundbreaking discovery made in lunar soil from China's Chang'e 5 mission, the identification of naturally formed few-layer graphene, which could have significant implications for material science here on Earth. Stay tuned for these incredible updates. NASA and Boeing teams are diligently working on analyzing data from their recent ground and spacecraft tests. This painstaking process is absolutely crucial as they evaluate the Starliner spacecraft's propulsion system during NASA's Boeing crew flight test mission. The focus here is twofold, ensuring astronaut safety and guaranteeing system reliability. One of the significant aspects of their analysis includes a detailed inspection of results from the recent docked hot fire testing. This is where the spacecraft's propulsion system was put through its paces while attached to the International Space Station. The teams are using these results to finalize the rationale for the spacecraft's integrated propulsion system. In simpler terms, they're making absolutely sure that every component functions perfectly before Starliner makes its journey back to Earth. There's also a considerable amount of planning underway for the spacecraft's undocking procedures. This includes operational strategies that could be employed in flight if necessary to boost the system's reliability even further. These steps are essential in building confidence that the Starliner will perform flawlessly when it detaches from the space station and heads for Earth. Ground and mission support teams aren't just analyzing data, they're actively preparing for the undocking event itself. They're participating in integrated simulations with space station operations teams, ensuring that every scenario is considered and rehearsed. These simulations are a key component in making sure that all systems are go when the actual undocking takes place. Next up in the agenda for the NASA and Boeing teams is the completion of Starliner's return planning. This process is expected to continue into the next week. Once they nail down all the details, they'll share more information about their readiness review and will likely hold a media briefing to update the public and the press. As always, the prime directive here is the safety of the astronauts. Nothing takes precedence over making sure they're brought back to Earth securely. On board the ISS, NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams are not sidelined in this process. They're keeping a close eye on ground developments, keeping themselves in the loop with what's happening back on terra firma. At the same time, they are fully engaged in their daily workload aboard the station, coordinating their activities with the Expedition 71 crew. Recently, Wilmore spent his time meticulously inspecting advanced plumbing hardware and packing life support components that need to be returned to Earth. Williams, on the other hand, has been setting up high-definition video equipment in the Columbus Laboratory module and inspecting barcode readers and radio frequency hardware. Both astronauts have also taken on organizing cargo in the Tranquility module, showcasing the kind of teamwork and adaptability that space missions demand. Their day-to-day -day tasks may seem routine, but in space, every little job contributes to the overall mission. Toward the end of their day, Wilmore and Williams joined a conference call with Boeing mission controllers, further solidifying the close collaboration between the astronauts and the ground support teams. As it stands, there's no official return date set for the Starliner astronauts aboard the ISS. NASA Commercial Crew Program Manager Steve Stitch mentioned in a recent press conference that while substantial progress has been made, there hasn't been a major announcement concerning a return date yet. The emphasis remains on thoroughness and precision, key factors for a successful and safe mission completion. Through every step of the way, NASA and Boeing exemplify meticulous planning and unwavering dedication to astronaut safety, showcasing why they remain leaders in space exploration and innovation. Space Perspective has unveiled the world's first marine spaceport, MS Voyager, promising a truly unique and carbon-neutral spaceflight experience. MS Voyager, an impressive 294-foot vessel, is set to revolutionize how we think about space travel. 
In collaboration with Geese Offshore, the ship is specially outfitted for launch and retrieval operations, positioning Space Perspective as a groundbreaking player in the marine-based global launch experience sector. The innovative launch system, onboard MS Voyager, features a series of rollers that work in sync to maneuver and stand the balloons upright on the vessel's extensive 200-foot deck. This design not only reduces the environmental footprint compared to traditional balloon launches, but also negates the need for an aircraft carrier, making the operation more efficient and eco-friendly. Tabor McCallum, the co-founder and co-CEO of Space Perspective, emphasized the significance of this advancement. According to McCallum, the capability to launch and retrieve the Neptune capsule at sea offers unparalleled global scalability and enhances the safety of routine operations. With MS Voyager now stationed at Port Canaveral in Florida, Space Perspective is well poised to bring this revolutionary spaceflight capability to the Space Coast and beyond. Named in honor of the iconic Voyager 1 space probe mission, MS Voyager is an engineering marvel. Equipped with dynamic positioning, four engines, and four generators, the vessel is designed to be highly maneuverable. Mission control is conveniently located on the bridge, along with extensive capsule support equipment that covers both pre-flight and post-flight operations. Designed specifically for launching and retrieving spaceship Neptune, the vessel plays a crucial role in the success and safety of Space Perspective's missions. Spaceship Neptune's pressurized capsule is designed to land gently in the water, a method of recovery that has been used successfully since the Apollo missions and continues with SpaceX today. After landing, fast boats will stabilize the capsule, and a custom-built 52-foot A-frame will lift it back onto MS Voyager. This A-frame, specifically built for space capsule retrieval, is the largest of its kind and represents the advanced technological capabilities of space perspective. What truly sets MS Voyager apart is its adaptability and mobility as a marine spaceport. This flexibility not only allows for more frequent and varied launch schedules, but also opens up the possibility of exploring different global locations for launches. As the vessel can relocate, prospective space travelers or space perspective explorers can witness spectacular Earth views from space in diverse and breathtaking settings. The global mobility of MS Voyager ensures that more people can engage in life-changing spaceflight experiences and cultivate a deeper appreciation for Earth's beauty and fragility. By minimizing the impact of wind and other environmental factors, the design of this mobile marine spaceport guarantees safe and efficient operations, opening up space travel to a broader audience. In recent space news, there's been an electrifying discovery involving lunar soil from China's Chang'e 5 mission. Simply put, researchers have identified naturally formed few layer graphene in a sample collected during the mission back in 2020. This is huge news because graphene, with its unique optical, electrical, and mechanical properties, is highly sought after in materials science. The tail of this discovery begins with a 2.9 by 1.6 millimeter olive-shaped sample of lunar soil. A team led by professors Ming Zhu and Wei Zheng from Jilin University, as well as Xu Zhuan Li and Wen Kai Ren from the Chinese Academy of Sciences, used a specialized spectrometer to examine the sample. Within a carbon-rich section of the soil, they detected an iron compound essential for graphene formation. Further analysis with advanced microscopy and mapping techniques confirmed it. Carbon flakes, consisting of two to seven layers of graphene, were present. So how did this graphene come to be? The researchers believe it may have originated from volcanic activity in the moon's early history. Solar winds might have played a role as well by stirring the lunar soil and iron-rich minerals enough to transform carbon atoms into graphene. Additionally, the high temperature and high pressure conditions triggered by meteorite impacts on the moon could have contributed to the formation of this fascinating material. On Earth, graphene is a game changer. Known for its exceptional strength, minimal weight, and superior conductivity, it's used in various applications ranging from electronics to advanced composites. The discovery of natural few-layer graphene on the moon opens up new possibilities. The researchers suggest it might lead to the development of cost-effective production methods for high-quality graphene, potentially making this valuable material more accessible for widespread use. The implications are vast. This could revolutionize how we produce graphene here on Earth, potentially lowering costs and expanding its applications. In their published report, 
the research team emphasized that mineral-catalyzed formation of natural graphene on the moon offers insights that could spur breakthroughs in scalable synthesis techniques for graphene. They even hinted that this discovery might prompt a new wave of lunar exploration programs aimed at understanding and leveraging these natural processes. Imagine the potential of future missions collecting lunar soil samples specifically to harvest or study naturally formed graphene. It aligns perfectly with our continuous quest to harness space resources for the benefit of life on Earth. What's clear is that this exciting finding is not just a milestone in space exploration, but also a beacon for future technological advancements. That's all for today's episode of Astronomy Daily. I'm your host, Anna. To keep up with all things space, visit us at astronomydaily.io for more episodes, our free daily newsletter, and a constantly updating news feed. Also, find us on social media by searching for Astro Daily Pod on Facebook, X, YouTube, and TikTok. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, keep looking up. Astronomy.